Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another vlog. I just got home from a hot girl walk. Yes, I am still calling it that. You can find me. I was listening, of course, to the Laguna Beach podcast with Kristen and Steven. Love it. Very nostalgic. I am actually going to make some breakfast and have some coffee. And I thought I would catch up with you all. I'm taking off my shoes right now. Because, you know, it's been a minute since we caught up, did a little Q&A. And yeah, I've been, I just, it's been go, go, go lately, which I mean, I'm sure it's that way for everyone. But like, since I got home from England, I've just been kind of like trying my best to catch up with all my friends. I went and actually I filmed this video, well like part of it, like earlier this week. Um, these videos are like a week or so delayed, but I ended up like the audio was messed up. I was trying a new mic situation, it didn't work out. But anyways, I went for my weekly, bi-weekly walk with my friend Lyra. She's one of my friends from Tennessee and we walked around, got some coffee, chilled a little bit. And then Friday night, which was the 30th of September, September was when Hocus Pocus 2 came out. My friend Laura and her husband Joe hosted us for like a fun little night and we kind of like dressed up a little bit. I dressed up as Allison, Drew dressed up as Max, and then Laura and their friend Sean dressed up as Jay and Ice, which was really funny. And we made like the cutest, we saw it on Pinterest, like the cutest charcuterie board that was like in the shape of the Sanderson sisters. It was a hit, I loved it. And the movie was okay, like it was mostly just for the nostalgia, but yeah, that was great great and then this week I've just been kind of like putting my head down working I will get into like a rat chats update it's not bad it's just you know anyways so I thought I would make some breakfast and answer some questions I think I'm just gonna make like a yogurt situation oh there are the stick I have some fruit that's like on the way out so I think I'm gonna make a fruit salad okay so the first and most asked question, honestly, was do you see yourself moving to England? Like, are you gonna actually move to England? Would you and Drew ever move to England someday? Like all of these questions about moving to England. And I guess we've like talked about it in the past. Like we've always said that maybe we would have some sort of experience where we move to another country for a couple years. I definitely wouldn't say no, like if the opportunity presented itself, but yeah, I don't know. There, It's so funny because, that one's a no. It's so funny because like, I do think that, I don't know if I'm like speaking out of turn or whatever. I'm not speaking for every single person in the UK, but people in the UK really have strong opinions about Americans. And like, I get it because you know, there's reasons for that for sure. That strawberry is disgusting. Some of the people that, um, you know, represent us aren't the greatest. So I wholeheartedly get that, but I just don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm editing this right now. And I didn't really answer the question specifically because I got sidetracked by the fact that my entire For You page on TikTok for the last like week has been British people hating Americans. <laughs> like, I think I just was in a spot where I was feeling defensive or something, which is weird because like, I have no problem with people talking shit about Americans or America. But I think my answer was like more based off of the fact that that morning I had seen so many TikToks of like people walking around London and being like what's the worst part of Americans living in London or like what do you hate about Americans and like I've never had opinions on people from other countries so like it just I don't know why it like bothered me but to answer the question if the opportunity presented itself yeah Absolutely. I love it there so much. I watch Escape to the Country every single night when I'm eating dinner. Like I would love <laughs> to live in the English countryside someday. Um, I think I was thinking like too logistically about it and I was also feeling sensitive because of TikTok. Okay, on with the vlog. <laughs> that wouldn't be the only reason that I wouldn't move there, but I just don't know. It's like really far away, but I do love visiting. Like I'd love to make it like I'd love to visit there like once or twice a year. So we'll see what happens in the future. I'm not like super opposed to the idea, but it's not something that like I'm actually thinking about, but I do love visiting. And if the opportunity presented itself in like a post pets world, after our pets are long gone, then like possibly, maybe, I don't know. But for now, probably not. I got a couple questions about my tattoo, which I guess I never really showed that much in that vlog where I got it done, but there it is. It's just a tiny little smiley face, but it was a true spur of the moment decision. I have always had like a list in my phone of running tattoo ideas. So this wasn't like a new thing. Um, the idea of a smiley face tattoo, it was just sort of something I came up with last minute because if we're being honest, <laughs> The tattoo shop we were at, the original idea that I thought of, um, 
just it didn't turn out great and then i tried to think of another idea and that didn't turn out great either so this was like my third idea and it was just like a cute little fun one just very very tiny but i have had the idea of like something to commemorate just sort of this chapter in my life does that make sense i need to wash this kiwi we are going to ignore all of the dishes in my sink but this chapter in my life has been like really meaningful because this year in particular i feel like was the year that i really started taking care of myself and prioritizing myself and like oh my god we have to move again i really started putting myself first and prioritizing like my mental health my physical health i went back to therapy for the first time since like my early 20s i started trying to exercise more and just like take better care of myself overall and I mean it's still very much a process but I'm just really proud of that even things like trying new foods that I've never had before or standing up for myself in situations like in friendships or whatever um, this kind of like I don't know I wanted to commemorate that for this year and also like my trip to England and all that fun stuff so yeah this question I thought was interesting and I don't really have like a set answer for, but it's something that I'm seeing a lot more creators kind of talking about recently. And the question said, how do you decide what to share with your audience and what you keep private? That's still a balance I am very much trying to work on. And I don't know if you've been, how long you've been watching me, but like what I show online has very much changed over the last few years, last couple years. I think back in the day, I used to share absolutely everything, like everything you could imagine. I shared personal family details. I mean, I told story times for like two years of my life, past relationships, like so many different things, personal details of my own relationship. Like it was just a lot. And so now I'm just a lot more, I don't know, I've learned the value value of having a little bit of privacy and I know it probably doesn't seem like it because yeah a lot of my life well I would say 25% of my life is online and then like the other 75% is for me personally like it's my private life but I actually am very in a routine now of like what I will and will not show on my channel like friends kids for example I don't show anymore family members I don't really show anymore um, Drew's family members I don't really show anymore a lot of friendships that are outside of like the social media space I don't really share anymore it's just things that I'm like protecting you know and like what's great about boundaries is they can shift and change whenever and um i love that i love being able to take a few steps that are probably really small to most people but that like help protect my peace and nothing matters more to me than my peace and my private life sometimes i film things and then i'm like oh actually i don't really feel comfortable sharing that or like it feels like it may be like a safety thing or whatever so it's just a matter of like learning as you go along and i very much am still learning but yeah i definitely don't film half of the stuff i used to and that's for a reason you know okay let's make coffee Okay, the next couple of questions are actually about Midnight's, which is Taylor Swift's new album that she is now releasing in 17 days. Holy shit. My coffee was spilling. <laughs> and I got some questions about like, how are you doing? Are you gonna be filming a reaction video? No, I won't be filming a reaction video because to be honest, like my brain cannot compute. Like I can't like give you a reaction. I'm literally just sitting there in silence like this. I feel things very deeply and so I would never be able to like film a good reaction so that probably won't be for me but um, one of my friends Ali asked which track are you claiming on Midnight's and I haven't heard what track 5 is yet obviously I don't know like there are so many different things that intrigue me Antihero obviously sounds so interesting that's the most recent one at the time of filming this that's been released but also the fact that there's a Taylor Swift song called Vigilante Shit that exists that I haven't heard yet it's like too much for my brain to process I can't I think that one's gonna ruin my life I think it's gonna destroy me in the best way possible I think it's gonna be my new favorite Taylor Swift song honestly to put in my coffee by the way Drew and I found this chai concentrate because we haven't been to Trader Joe's in a while we found this chai concentrate that's decaf so he gets to put it in his coffee and then so do I so I get to have like a little dirty chai situation I don't put that much because I don't like super sweet coffee and it is concentrate so I do like that much someone asked will you be doing vlogmas this year I don't know I always do some iteration of it I've done it since 2017 but it's a lot it's stressful and you feel this sort of like 
FOMO if you don't do it, but then you also feel like really burned out. So I don't know, I may have to figure it out. I, I love that so many creators now, this is coffee by the way. Anyway, I love that so many creators are starting to be like, yeah, no, I'm not doing it this year or I'm gonna do it in my own way because like it, it started as this thing and there's sort of this pressure to like post every day. Also, those are, videos are usually really good ad revenue. So a lot of people wanna do it because obviously like you make more money than you usually would, but I don't know, we'll see. I'll do some form of vlogmas, obviously. A couple questions about customs. <laughs> Did I get stuck at customs? And I guess I sort of breezed right past that in the vlog, but that was something that I was very nervous about because if you remember my last trip to the UK was kind of a traumatic situation at customs I was literally held for like an hour and a half and questioned and they called Jasmine and they asked me every single question you could ever imagine in your entire life and like I genuinely like was almost not let into the country because she was confused about my job so anyway <laughs> this time I was kind of like okay I'm prepared for what I can say also this time around is a little bit different because I'm a business owner I own my own company now because of YouTube like I'm a registered business so I was just gonna say like oh I own my own business you know that whatever. And then when Alexa and I got to the area where we were supposed to go through customs, first of all, the line was crazy for anyone who like was a UK resident. I don't know why, but the line for EU passports and US passports just like breezed right past it. And we actually just went through a machine. Like we just stood there, it took our picture and we left. So I don't know why there was a difference between this time and last time. But then when we got back in the US, we stood in a line for about 20 minutes. And then literally as we were going around the corner, this random guy comes out of nowhere and he's like, hey, come this way. And he like kind of rerouted us to this area where again, it was just like a kiosk. And I just stood there, it scanned my face and then I was let back into the country. So much different experience this time. Favorite Great British Bake Off contestant this season so far? I've only watched two episodes at the time of this being filmed. There's only been two. So I'm gonna say Yanoush probably um, because I think he's really funny and quirky <laughs> and he makes me laugh with like his, his just like confidence and I just love him. So him so far and then there's another guy that I really like. Hold on, I need to look it up. Oh, I like Maxi. She seems really nice. Drew's in here now. I'm talking about my favorite Bake Off contestants. Mm. I like Maxi a lot and Sandro. So those are probably my favorites. Who are yours? I like Anush. Yeah, same. That, that, that was the first one I said. Star Caker. I got Star Caker. He's adorable. So Drew and I like him a lot. Also, he's really good. Cool, so. Yeah, and he's very talented. Never taken me so long to make my breakfast in my life, but I've just been blabbing. Okay, next question. A couple of different questions. This is like broken up into two parts. The first one was how was visiting England during like the time of mourning? And then also how was traveling internationally during COVID? And like, was it weird that everyone was maskless? To answer that part, yes, it was weird. And I'm just being perfectly honest, like I'm figuring it out. I have no idea what I'm doing. Alexa and I wore our masks like on the plane, on the trains. And then like when we got there, just nobody else was wearing one. And I don't know, I'm not gonna like speak for anyone else but I just sort of like fell into it and it's just like, well, if everyone else isn't doing it, I don't know. I'm just being perfectly honest. It felt really weird. I'm still learning how to navigate all of this, but yeah, it felt weird. And like, now that we're back in LA, we wear masks all the time. We wear them to the coffee shop, to the grocery store, like everywhere. So I don't know. It was, it was weird. And like nobody, nobody, nobody. <laughs> wears masks over there. Like it's very, very rare, so I don't know. But no, I was not comfortable being maskless. It was just sort of like, I sort of fell into it, I'm gonna be honest. And then how was it being there during the Queen's stuff? Um, it didn't affect our trip at all, except for that one day we tried to go down to Green Park to like get a view of the palace and it was closed off. But like we were only in London for the Friday and Saturday before her funeral, which was Monday. So it wasn't, we didn't really get affected by anything. Thing. But the only, I guess, probably difference was that things were closed on Monday for her actual funeral. It was like a full national holiday. And then just like everywhere you went, there were like flowers and photos of her. And it was like, I mean, as an American, we don't have anything to compare it to. And I mean, I have my own thoughts on like the monarchy and stuff and like, 
Anyway, I understand that like she meant a lot to a lot of people. But yeah, as Americans, it's like really hard to comprehend. But overall, like yeah, it didn't it didn't affect our trip at all whatsoever. A couple questions. One of which says. Are you coming back to Japan now that it's opening back up next month? And the other one says, will you be going to Tokyo soon? Oh, you can't see you really well. He's going. Basically, our plan is to just sort of wait it out and like see what... What the conditions yeah, are. Yeah, like how, I, how I, it's going. I've heard that... I don't even know if they've come out with like the full... It's not until the 11th, which I don't know. This will be up like shortly before that. We don't know what the... I guess protocols will be. Mm -hmm. So I've heard people saying there might still be a quarantine oh. period. I don't know. So we'll see. But yeah, as soon as we can. You so can't we'll see, see him at all, but anyway. I'm over here. <laughs> He's over there. But yeah, we're gonna wait and see like what the situation is like and then decide from there. But yeah, we'd love to go back. Oh my gosh, of course. Do you ever think about just focusing on the blog channel or growing either channel? And yes. Um, if you would have asked me back in like October of last year, I wanted to delete my main channel. I literally never wanted to film a main channel video again, and I just wanted to vlog. And then I went through a phase where I like fell back in love with my main channel and I wanted to delete my vlog channel. <laughs> but I do think those two types of content are kind of different, so I like to keep them separate. And I don't know, there are aspects of me that are like, ooh, don't know how I feel about putting my life online and like letting people say whatever they want about it. Um, I'll probably do another video about that in the future, about how it's really kind of affected my own perception of myself, like reading people's perception of me. But um, long story short, I'm gonna keep things the way they are for now. I would love to only have one YouTube channel because if you remember back in the day, like everyone had two YouTube channels. So that's just sort of how it happened. And then a lot of people have started like kind of dwindling it down to one channel and it just wouldn't make sense for the type of content I make. So we'll see maybe someday. Yeah, the goal would be to like have one channel for sure. But also sometimes I like having two. Which one would you get rid of? If I was, if you were asking me today, my main channel. But I love, like, I love my main channel. I just love making and editing vlogs so much more. Like, it feels more creative and stuff. And I love, it's like a virtual photo album to look back on for my life, you know. I think that's all the questions I'm going to answer for today. Because I'm going to have my delicious, look at these cute bowls, by the way. My yogurt parfait, it has yogurt, granola, almond butter. Or mixed nut butter. I'm going to have my fruit salad. These bowls um, I got at a Goodwill, but I'm pretty sure they're from like Dollar Tree. So here we go. <laughs> so cute. I just really felt like having a very cute aesthetic breakfast. Oh, and my dirty chai is delicious, by the way. Dirty, filthy. <laughs> my dirty, filthy, slutty chai. It was actually, well, I guess it would be really dirty because I didn't put that much chai. Right? It's more dirty if you put espresso. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for catching up with me. I'm sure a lot of you have questions about the rat situation. I'll give you a brief update. We can hear them now. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. So we're not freaking out. Um, we're just gonna be proactive. And it's just part of like living in an apartment. Our apartment's like over a hundred years old. So yeah, it's gonna happen, you know? It's like, these are just things you deal with um, and we're more well-equipped from the last experience and at least so far, we can't hear them like eating away at the walls or like screaming at night or feeling them like when we're in the bathtub. Like, I could like feel them like crawling under the bathtub. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, um, we might have to bring rat chats back because- Or mice. Mm -hmm. I think it's rats. I think it has to be because that's what I forgot to mention in the other video. I'll keep this brief. But one night we were coming home. It was after we watched that movie in the cemetery. It was like one in the morning. We had walked our friends out to their car or their Uber or whatever. We got back and I was walking up to like our alley and there's another neighbor who had like a little carport situation and I watched a rat crawl up the wall and into the roof and I was like. They have a fruit tree. <sighs> they have a fruit tree right there. So anyway, I don't know. Whatever, it's gonna be fine. It'll all work out. We're not moving, so um, we're just gonna have to deal with it. And it's not bad. And this apartment's like amazing. I would love it. That's gonna do it. Thanks for watching. Oh my god, that's so good. And we'll see you next time. Bye.